Alright guys, welcome back. This is going to be part two of the Texas Big Bass Send series. If you guys have not seen the very first episode, I'll leave a link to it up here if you guys wanted to check it out. I highly recommend it. It's the first three days of our trip and honestly the most exciting and most consistent three days that we had on the entire trip. So where we're going to pick up is kind of where we left off. Where we left off in that video, not to spoil it if you haven't seen it but we had a really good day out on one of the lakes out there we caught four fish for like 24 pounds caught a bunch of five pounders and then phoenix caught an eight pounder right there at the end so again if you guys have not seen that video i'd go and check it out but today we're going to pretty much pick up right where we left off and so what happened is kind of what fishing can be it's very unpredictable even when you go to a place that it's supposed to be better than where you're coming from. So after that day, we wanted to go right back out. So we kind of went back out the next morning. So this is going to be day four and well, it kind of rained day four. So we went out there in the morning. We fished as long as we could. We got a few bites, but nothing special. And then we got rained out on. So that kind of sucked. That kind of put the damper on it. but. That was okay, like it's unpredictable, you never know how it's gonna go, especially with the weather. So we waited out the storm, and then later on that day, we actually linked up with our buddy Grant Lingmore for the very first time. We didn't catch any fish on the swim bait, but Grant brought like a punching rig and a frog rod, and he caught a few fish that way, but it was honestly just good to get out on the water and just talk fishing and you know hang out and just chill. So that was pretty much day four. Day five is on a Saturday. So out there, it was really good weather and we wanted to go back to the first lake that we went to. Well, that lake is very notorious for having, you know, wakeboarders and just a bunch of crazy stuff going on. So we kind of didn't want to take the 14 footer out there because we feel like three guys in that boat with a bunch of big waves probably wouldn't have been that great. So Grant hit up his buddy, Jay, from Jay Gone Fishing and Jay invited us out on his super sick boat. So that morning we went out with Jay on his boat. We kind of just fished around. Nothing happened until later on in the day until we started to get some action. And it, the bite was so boring and so dead that Phoenix and Jay for most of the day were talking about Dogecoin and how they were making money or losing money on it while I'm in the back of the boat trying to stay focused and Grant's up on the front also trying to stay focused while those two are just talking about Dogecoin. About halfway through the day, we pull up to a spot that Grant has seen tons of big fish on and so like I'm in the zone, I'm ready to catch a big fish and we pull up to the spot and this is what happens. Came off. Oh my god. That was a good one. That was a Came off. Oh my god. So super unfortunate, but I don't know if you guys could hear in the video that I say, come on, eat it. So what had happened is I threw my bait up there, which is the nine inch high power herring the high power swim baits, the nine inch gliding gizzards. And I threw it up right next to this little spot, start working the bait and it kind of comes out from the shade line and I'm watching it down there and I see this fish right behind it. And I'm like, oh my God, eat it. So I glide, glide, I stop it. I see the fish is like right behind it. And then I glide, glide, glide again. And I see the fish, it's like on my bait. I didn't really even see it eat it. I just. I just said, I, I'm pretty sure it, it kind of swiped it a bit. And so I set the hook, I connect on the fish, and right away I was like, oh crap, I barely have this thing hooked. One prong outside of the mouth, like it just wasn't good. And what those fish in Austin do, it seems like, especially those post spawn fish, they love to come up and jump. I mean, it seems like that's all they do is you hook them they stay right on the surface and jump. And it's like 
one of the worst things to have a big bass do, especially with those heavier, bigger glide baits, and when they're not even crushing it that hard like mine did, it was inevitable that the fish was actually going to come off. And unfortunately, it was a really nice fish. It was probably a seven or eight pound fish. Who knows? It looked kind of just like Phoenix's fish in the water. Big head, long body, super tall, but just not filled out. So it was kind of a bummer, but I was like, all right, whatever. Let's just keep fishing kind of a deal. Like that's just how it goes sometimes. I knew as soon as I hooked into it that I was probably gonna lose that fish. So fast forward probably 10, 15 minutes, we are starting to fish docks. Everybody is has stopped talking about Dogecoin and we're all more focused in on fishing it after I dump a fish. So we're going down, we're fishing some docks and Phoenix gets his one opportunity of the day too. Come up, dude. You'll lose him on any hook. It doesn't matter. Ben, what happened today? All right, I caught a pretty nice canine fish. I'd say so. Oh, nice one. Ate it off a dock. Just a beautiful fish. Florida strain. Heavy five. Big old mouth. Thanks to you. The guy yes, put me on her. I said pitch it over there. And thanks I to you. I didn't do anything. I just <laughs> <laughs> oh, We're gonna are grab some picks and get are it out you of here. Stoked? Oh, I'm I'm kind of stoked, you know. I wish it was six, but it is what it is. It is what it is. It is what it is. Three, one more time. Right, Three, right. two, one. All right, we're gonna get the release on this girl. Just a beauty. Hold it right there for two seconds. With the swim bait kid. It's all him and the guide, of course. Told me where to cast. All right, girl. She's dead. Yep. Great. Great job. We killed her. You just ran her over. So. In that video, I don't know if you guys could hear it or not either, but Phoenix had made that pitch back way in the back of that dock. He started working it, and I think three glides in, the fish comes up, swipes it, and misses it. And that's when he goes, oh, I just got swirled on. And he keeps working the bait, and the fish comes back, gets it the second time, sets the hook, and right away we both saw that, again, back treble hook. They weren't crushing the baits. They were kind of just swiping at it, like almost if they knew that it was fake, but they still wanted to bite it just to see if it was fake or not, and they were just barely getting hooked. But luckily, that back treble hooked him right in the meat of the jaw, so that fish stayed pinned the entire way, and it was a pretty decent fish, and that was our second bite of the day. And then we're about to get off the lake, and Grant has picked up the depth to 50, and he's been fishing it around all day with anything without seeing anything, no followers, no biters, anything like that. And we're literally on the last stretch of the day when this happens. That's how you get bit. Let the stupid thing float up. Worst cast catch I've ever gotten in my life. I hope you know. No, it's good. It's literally shit. No, it's a good I didn't even feel the bite. <laughs> you literally just started reeling down. It was a wine bite. <laughs> like it ate a live sardine. <laughs> No, 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 Drag was it set? Oh. What the? That was a big one, dude. <laughs> yeah. Before that, you know, I was that whole the the number one saying of that entire trip was probably drag check, drag check, drag check. I would say it to Phoenix literally four or five times out of the day, even though we know we tightened it after the first or second time. It was like, you just never know because for us coming from Arizona, normally you get one shot for the entire day and that's it. So you can't have any malfunctions. Everything has to be perfect. So on this trip, I was like, bro, we're gonna make sure that our drags are checked always because we don't have time 
to miss fish or dump fish because our drag wasn't set. So Grant isn't using one of my rods. And I had said drag check earlier, he picked up one of Jay's combos and he started fishing with that. I, at this point, I knew Phoenix's drag was good. I knew mine was good. So I just completely forgot that Grant had just picked up a new rod. Unfortunately, with Jay's rod, I didn't tell Grant to, to check his drag. It had been a very long time since I'd seen a fish crush a depth to 50 that hard. I mean, it was probably better to see it with like your own real eyes and not through the GoPro, but it was crazy because all day he was fishing the 250 like this. Like super slow, and normally we don't fish it that slow. And I'm like, bro, like you gotta speed it up. And so literally on that cast, you can see him kind of working it really, really fast. He pauses it and dude, the bait turns and this fish comes out and just freaking smokes it. Like it crushes it. He goes to set the hook, drag is completely loose, fish spits it out and it's gone. Just like that, blink of an eye. And he was like, bro, my drag. I'm like, that's insane because I've literally been saying drag check for literally the past four days straight. And of course, I forget to tell him because he picked up Jay's rod halfway through the day. Super unfortunate that both me and Grant, we missed our opportunities that we got, but luckily enough, Phoenix was there to save the day and catch the one fish for the entire day when we were out there. So moving on to day number six, we linked up with our buddy, Jared, again and we went to this very different lake that was you know outside of austin but he said that there's going to be less boat pressure because it's a sunday the weather is really nice there's going to be a, a crap ton of people really anywhere so we wanted to go somewhere that was a bit less pressured so none of us capsized in our boat so it was phoenix grant jared and myself and we kind of did this little 2v2 tournament me and phoenix versus jared and grant biggest fish won it and it's apparently it's a small fish lake and well that turned out to be true because we only caught like I want to say we only caught three fish total and they were, all of them were like two pounds and under so it wasn't that exciting we fished out there for a really long time for pretty much nothing so I kind of just scrapped the footage that we got today it wasn't anything exciting I didn't want to bore you guys to death with two pounders so that was day number six so then the next day we went back out with grant on my boat back to the first lake that we went to and we had fished all morning we were making runs we were trying to figure out where these fish might have been or where they've gone and grant decides yo let's make a run pretty far let's go see if there's a fish up at one of these spots that i've caught them before at and lo and behold we get lucky with one So that was pretty cool. Grant saw the fish come up first, and that's when you see him go, oh, and then the fish eats it and he sets the hook. And I believe that was his first Clash 9 fish, actually. And so it was cool because we were talking about how good the Clash 9 was, and he was like, oh, no, it's Hinkle Shad this and Depth 250 that. But we're like, no, dude, like the K9, it gets freaking smashed out here, and that was his first fish. So it was pretty hype in the boat after that, but that was legit our only one fish of the entire morning that we had so I mean I'm glad that Grant smoked one that makes I believe every single person that has fished out of my boat has caught a fish out of my boat so nobody skunked which before in one of my previous boats people had skunked and never caught anything out of it so the boat at this point I'm like all right cool everybody's catching swim bait fish out of my boat feels great and we're having a good time so that was pretty much it. We went out a little bit later that day to one of the other lakes out there, but it wasn't that good. So we kind of scrapped that day and that was the only fish of the day. So definitely very 
inconsistent considering from the first three days when we were catching at least two a day or obviously four a day to where it's like you get one shot one shot one shot one shot one shot and that's basically all you're gonna get so it wasn't like super tough where we're not catching them we're at least getting that one bite which is really all that matters to me obviously i just wish they were bigger model fish but you know it is what it is five to six pounders you can't complain that much especially when they're coming on the swim bait and you're getting to watch them eat your bait so then the next day grant has this idea that we should go and fish one of his buddies places that he's got that he's made videos out there before of them catching giant fish and this place is owned by his buddy named ace and i remember seeing ace and grant way back in the day as these young little kids catching giant swim bait fish out of like this giant waterfall area and it was like yeah let's go we got nothing better to do so we ended up going and it was absolutely beautiful it was like legit like just this little river stream area that apparently had giant fish in it and there's this giant waterfall it looked really dope but unfortunately we didn't catch anything we had a few bites grant saw like an eight pounder chewing on a freaking gizzard shad but that was it it wasn't good we didn't catch anything so we we're like all right well screw it that's just what it is that's legit fishing because it was wild to be there and thinking any one of these casts i make i could hook into a double digit right now while i'm waiting in this river system it was a wild thought it didn't happen but hey that's legit fishing at even in texas it can be kind of hard earlier that day our buddy John, you guys might know him as John B. Rowland, John B. Jojo Bars 33. He's kind of a big YouTuber on this platform. He hit us up and was like, hey, see so you guys are in Texas. You guys want to try and come fish? And we're like, yeah, dude, like whenever. So Tuesday night after we got done with the river, we decided to get all the gear and head up north to John's place. And we spent the night at his place. It was really dope. Again, if John, if you're somehow watching this, thanks for having us, dude. It was, it was a blast. And so we went up to his place, spent the night. We woke up super early in the morning to go fish one of his lakes that he likes to go to. And pretty much just here's some of that footage from that morning of B-roll and a, like a couple fish catches. So we have Phoenix Pickner. Grant. Langmore, and then yeah. Grant Langmore's assistant. Yeah, the, <laughs> I see you're helping your you wanna, son you over here. See if you got some fat ass nails. Maybe get that out, or what the hell? No shot. Oh, got there we go. On you guys, we're here at what, what's this lake called? King Possum. Possum Possum's a Possum Kingdom <laughs> Lake here. What we don't we don't say the names of lakes? <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. We're at Possum Kingdom Lake. We drove through the night to John's house, and uh, yeah, I don't know. We're here we're here with a couple of sticks, Grant and John. We're gonna try and catch some fish. I, they're gonna be throwing conventional, and Jeff and I, of course, are gonna, gonna be throwing the swim baits. But I don't know. We got here a little later than we wanted to. Um, but the vibes, right? The, the vibes the vibes are here. Grant's pitch because it's real grown. Rumor has it there's some big bass in this lake, so. Do you think you're gonna get one today? Dude, I, I'm always confident in my abilities. I think, what are you throwing? I think you, I'll at least get a shot. You like this bait, don't you? Just got it. I already caught some up. Look at that. Zoom in on that. You want me to zoom in? Oh. <laughs> I got you. Look at these. Ooh. Tiger musky. Tiger baby. musky. They're out here, dude. <laughs> And John, do you think we're gonna catch them? We're either gonna go zero here today. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. So it's all swim baits? All swim baits and all swim cooks. <laughs> yeah. Hey, and that's a good one. <laughs> Heck yeah, dude. Go, baby. Yes, what, sir. dude? Serious? That's dope. On the K9, huh? On the K9, baby. That Do you like it off. now, dude? I'm sold. You're sold just like that, BK. Oh Look my at that god, fish, dude. 
There you go. First five minutes. All right, that might be a six. It's a big one. Did you see that, dude? Yeah, that was ridiculous. <laughs> I, I freaking, I was messing with John's rod tip, and I reeled That was ridiculous. Freaking head shaking. Dude, I'm sold on the quads. That fish yeah, buttoned quads. itself. You're welcome. I'm taking those back. I hope you understand that. So yeah, it was, it was okay. Literally, first cast of the morning, Grant catches like a five and a half or six pounder on the canine before the cameras were even set up we were like whoa this is crazy this is gonna be an insane day we're gonna smoke them and then we fished around a little grant caught that little one on the canine literally just dead sticking it which i'd done earlier before in the trip which was wild and then what i didn't show is we had a few other followers i had like a six seven pounder literally doing circles under my 250 right next to the boat Unfortunately, I could never get it to actually bite the bait, but it was pretty much hypnotized to the depth 250. It had probably never seen a 250 before in its entire life, and it just was so curious, and it kind of wanted it just to crush it, but I never was able to get it the right angle and the right speed for it to eat it. But Phoenix had a few other bites as well on the K9 that day that just didn't stick and connect. Grant and John, they pretty much ended up throwing conventional for the rest of the day. They caught a few fish. John didn't make a video because the fishing was so tough and we were out there for so long and it was just not the best conditions. But other than that, I mean, it was a good time just to hang out with John again and just talk fishing and business and all that other great stuff. So, and so then after that, we drove back down. This would be Wednesday night and we ended up going back to the Airbnb and we left the next morning. I dropped Phoenix off at the airport and I took the 16 hour drive all the way back home and that was pretty much the end of the trip. In the moment, it felt super long and I, I guess it kind of was. I think we were there for like 10 days really total and um, it was a lot of fun. Both me and Phoenix, we can't wait to go back to really try and dial in Texas and really catch a big fish. I mean, that eight pounder was apparently a really nice one for that specific lake, so that was dope in and of itself. Be, at the beginning of the trip, we were like, dude, if we could catch like some five and six pounders and then maybe like some, like a eight, like a seven or eight pounder, that'd be great. And so Phoenix was able to get that eight pounder. That eight pounder actually cost me a hundred dollars because at the beginning of most of these trips, I make a bet with Phoenix. I'm like, hey, like whoever catches the biggest fish or the first fish or whatever, something like that, I'll get you a hundred dollars. And so we made a bet and that eight pounder cost me a hundred dollars. but it was worth it that makes phoenix try which sometimes he doesn't on these trips so that was basically the trip i just want to give a huge shout out to the guys that you know hung out with us and showed us around texas from jared chris grant jay and john for hanging out and showing us texas and what it's really about and again a huge shout out to all the companies that supported us on that trip i'll leave links to everything down in the description below if you guys want to check out the people that we hung out with or even the companies that had supported us on the trip. Again, thank you guys so much for allowing us to do what we do and being cool. So other than that, I got some new videos hopefully coming out this week if I can get some time away from filming to film them and edit them and get them up. So be on the lookout for some new videos coming up at least within a week. And other than that, thank you guys ever so much for watching and as always go out there and chase your dreams.